everyone. Welcome to our week mid week. What, what is the date today? <laughs> today is March 9th. All right, let's start over. All right. All right. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to our midweek update. It is March 9th and we're going to start out with some announcements today. Uh, Brian, we're having some pizza tonight. Yes, pizza tonight. Pizza is from 515 to 545, followed by worship at 6 to 630, and then 412 from 630 to 7. Yep, and the worship is going to be a little different. It's intergenerational worship, so it will be a time... Uh, for you to come and worship with people of all ages. We have an activity and then a lesson, and each week is going to be a little different. So if you come this week and you're thinking, that's really not my thing, um, it will be a little different the following week. And um, so we're gonna change some things up. We're gonna have a variety of worship styles, a lot of different types of activities. And the important thing is, is Jesus told us that where two or three are gathered, he's in the midst, and we're gonna gather together as a family and um, do some worship today. Also, our new life group series on the Discipleship Pathway has started. Leroy, have those gotten off to a good start? They seem to have gotten off to a good start. I was part of one for a brief minute, and the response was very positive and very just, the conversation was flowing very well with the questions that are in there. Yeah, and it's not too late to get into a group. Uh, groups have started this week, but um, we still have, you still have time to get in one. So if you feel like you know, you're know you hearing people talk about it, you want to get involved, let us know. We will get you plugged into a group, and all of the materials are actually online, so you can get caught up. You won't be behind at all. Uh, so reach out to us in the office, fumc at bright.net, if you are interested in getting involved um, in a life group. Also, um, I know, as we all know, there's a lot going on in the nation of Ukraine right now. And Alan Mike Sell, who is a member of our church, uh, has been involved with an organization called SARA, which stands for Sharing America's Resources Abroad. And he told me a lot about SARA even before this war kind of brought Ukraine into focus. Um, he's been working with a children's home on the western side of Ukraine um, for a number of years and has been sending me updates from their executive director. And um, right now, the situation is in such flux, I think they're still trying to discern exactly what they need, uh, but there's certainly a lot of opportunities to help these girls who are in a children's home. I, I mean, I can't imagine we work with, Lindsay and I have worked with foster kids here, being separated from your parents is hard enough, Right. but then to be separated from everything else that's familiar to you um, yeah. would just be unimaginable. Yeah, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of a war, Right. Losing what you're familiar with would just be just an added decline in your lifestyle. Yeah. They, and I mean, I don't even think they know where they're going to end up at this point. So um, fortunately, I don't think they've they've had a lot of the shelling and stuff yet because they're more in the western side of the country. But uh, we certainly want to be able to help them. And so if you if you want to engage in that ministry and sharing America's resources abroad, Sarah, uh, you can just drop a check in the offering boxes in the North X area, just like you would your normal offering. But if you would put Sarah, S-A-R-A, in the memo line, Alan will make sure that he gets us the information and we will get them a check. Um, so we're going to collect the resources and then here in a few weeks we're going to announce how much we collected and we'll be sure to send those. And then if there's other things that they need in addition to monetary support, uh, we'll be sure to update you uh, uh, during Sunday worship and right here on these midweek videos. Well, I heard that we have the wise men in the summer. Yeah. And yeah. now we have a ladies choir. That's the that's the newest, latest, greatest thing that I heard too. Well, if the, the men were women. wise, then what does that mean the women are? Wiser. Be, caref be careful. The wiser, wiser women. The wiser women. That's wow, that's good. That's, that is good, Leroy. Yeah. 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 And and they're they're actually gonna be singing the song Jesus Paid It All. So um hmm. If you're interested in that, you can talk to Linda Temple. They're going to be singing on April 3rd during the 10 a.m. services, and there's going to be two practices on March 23rd and the 30th in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. And so uh, there, that all of this information will be in the bulletin this week. And and I can assure you that even if you do not feel like your vocal ability is is at a high level, the the purpose of this is not to be perfect. 
It's to build relationships and to get to know other women in the church. And so I would encourage you ladies, regardless of your vocal range, um, even if you're just coming for support, join uh, in this endeavor and I think you'll be blessed. Anything you want to add agree. to that? I, I know with the wise men, that's the big focus is not necessarily on the singing, but on the community and just coming together as, right. as friends and making a joyful noise. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if you've never spent time with Linda Temple, she uh, you're going to have a good time. Um, so ladies, be sure to sign up for that. And then, Brian, what do we need to do to our clocks this week? Sunday morning, <laughs> we got to spring forward. So we lose that hour of sleep. And uh, if you show up at your normal time for church, you're going to be late. Actually, you're losing an hour of sleep. I gain an hour because I got small kids. Well, yeah. So they just <laughs> they get up an hour later now. It's, it's great. But we also pick up that extra hour of sunshine. So it's going to be daylight till almost 8 o'clock now, which will be a nice thing. It is. I can't wait. I am ready for that. I am too. So... Oh, Brian, uh, I think we have some birthdays this week. We do. So we're going to start announcing on these midweek updates. So starting on Wednesday of the week and going through the following Tuesday, we're going to give you the list of those birthdays that fall during this time. So this week we'd like to celebrate Keaton Metz, Adam Stedke, Linda Bowman, Carolyn Eakins, Barb Morgan, Colby Phillips, Juliana Welker, and Eric Schmelzer. Well, happy birthday to all of you. And for those of you who have already had your birthdays, uh, we will pick you up in 2023. And I, I know how you feel. I had a summer birthday, so I never got to celebrate my birthday at school. Um, so, yeah. but just a little left out this year, but we're going to pick you up. And we sure hope that all of you that have already had birthdays have a happy birthday as well. Um, so we got a question this week uh, out of the Bible. And it was this. Uh, it says, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, was it just him feeling irritated or him being human and hangry? I love hangry. Hungry, <laughs> hungry and angry. Yeah, hangry is never a good thing. No, I mean, I've been hangry a time or two myself. And so I think to answer this question, uh, it's probably good for us to read the text because there's a lot kind of in between the fig tree, uh, the two pieces of the story that our questioner is asking um, that kind of, I think, fill in these blanks. So I'm going to read from the Gospel of Mark, and this is the 11th chapter, verse, uh, verses 12 through 25. Um, the next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in, the, in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. When he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again, and his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of money and of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, it is written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go and throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your heavenly father may forgive your sins. So there's a lot going on here, and let me just say, we're kind of answering these questions off the cuff and on the fly, so we may not go down as deep as we would if we had hours to study the passage, but hopefully this overview might clarify some things for people. Um, in the springtime, the fig trees in Israel start to get leaves, just like our fruit trees here do as well. So you might see an apple tree that has leaves, but it's not yet time for them to have some apples. Right. And so that's exactly what was going on here. And it's interesting because it says that Jesus went to find out if it had any fruit. 
Well, that's a, sure is an interesting way to say that. He went to find out if it had fruit in a time when anyone would know that it wasn't going to have any fruit. I mean, you know, if I go to look at an apple tree in early April, I know that there's probably not going to be any fruit on that tree. Not yet. So you got to think, this is talking about more than just a tree here. Jesus was not a dodo bird. He knew. He lived in the ancient Near East his entire life. Um, he knew the, the, the pattern of these fig trees. But he went to find out. And he rebuked the tree on purpose because he knew where they were going and he knew what he was going to do. And so he went and he cleansed the temple. And a lot of people think that his biggest concern was with the money changing and the business in the temple. And certainly that was part of it. I mean, I don't think that made him happy. But if you really dig down deep, what, what Jesus said is he said, my house was supposed to be a place of prayer for all nations. And you would see the Jewish people, they would actually keep the Gentiles out of the temple. Um, they put rules in place to make it harder for Gentiles to come to God. And Jesus was saying, I came and, and I gave you this promise as a Jewish people. The Father blessed Abraham, not so that you could keep these blessings for yourself, but so that you could share these blessings with the world. Uh, Jesus, or God told Abraham, I'm blessing you so that you can be a blessing to the nations, not just to your own children. And we know that, that God honored that promise, that truly, I mean, almost every major religion in the world, Islam, Christianity, and, and Judaism, they all tie back to Abraham, and that's a big chunk of the pie of world religions. And so when Jesus was overturning these temples, he was really upset because the people were using the things of God for their own purpose, and they were building wealth off of the things of God while, while the average citizen suffered under the decisions that they've made. And I think we certainly see that now in Washington, too. I mean, I heard a comedian a couple of nights ago, he made a comment, well, I don't care how high gas gets. He was trying to feel altruistic, you know. I don't care how high it gets. I, don't, I think he said, I don't care if it gets to $15 a gallon. Well, he's making $18 million a year, I, I found out, you know, and drives a $150,000 electric car. <laughs> Easy for him to say that he's being holy in the situation. Right. Um, and so, you know, how many times, though, do we as a church, if we're not careful, we try to make the things of God about us and about what we want. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, unfortunately, as, as human beings, that's what we do. I mean, we, we usually try to, as much as we don't want to, we end up putting me first instead of we. Right, and I find it on a daily occurrence that I have to, like, check myself or or sit and think for a moment, is this something God wants me to do, or is this something I'm trying to pursue for my own desires or needs? Yeah, well, and I think us, you know, with our church being more on the conservative side of the spectrum, it's great because we're fighting for the truth. We really are, and we stand up for the truth. But we have to be so careful not to make the truth into a God where we exclude people who don't see the truth yet. Like, we have to welcome them in and let them be shaped by the truth and and. You know, we say it all the time that everyone is welcome here, no matter who they are, no matter what they've done. But if we're not intentional about living into that belief, we won't. Yeah, it's uh, it's a daily challenge. Yeah, it's something that we have to work on. Yeah, and I think for me too, like I think it goes in reverse also. Like sometimes I feel like I'm so focused on the outward that I forget about the inward. That's a good point too. It's a, it's a balance. It's a very real balance. I mean, I just in the last two weeks, we've had discussions about two different people who may be getting out of prison and are looking for a church. And it's like, well, yeah, this is a place that they can come. Everybody's loved here. But if we're not careful, we could go, well, they're welcome here depending on what's on that sheet of paper, right? If it's, if it's petty theft, sure. But if it's one of those, I don't know, we got to be careful. Like, right. well, no, we're the church. We, everyone is welcome here. Or Paul would have been excluded. He was a murderer. Um, but, yeah. Hard facts. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went to a, uh, I just got back yesterday from a, um, a conference and it, there, it was all conservative folks. And it's funny, they love Jesus as long as it's espousing their conservative values. But in those places where Jesus kind of pushes up against it, well, I don't know if that's what he really said. <laughs> and then the conversation ends, right? Because yeah. Jesus is just an, in, an end to their means. Um, and we have to be so careful not to use Jesus for our own 
ambitions in our own ways, but yet kind of surrender to his will. Anything else? Uh, I don't think I have anything. No, I think I'm all right. I think I'm good. All right. Well, Brian, you want to close us in prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time, Lord, and I pray that as we have reached the midweek that each and every one of these people that are watching this video are doing well. God, I pray that you continue to work in and through us, and Lord, that you help us to plug into those places where you want us to go, not necessarily where we want to go, but where you are guiding. So Lord, we thank you and we love you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 And don't forget, you can email any questions you have to fumc at bright.net. And depending on how many we get, we may take more, uh, not take quite as long on each question, but be sure to let us know if you have a question about something going on in the church or a Bible passage, or you're just curious about something, we would be happy to take any questions. So God bless you all, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Have a great week. God bless.